Amphibious aircraft allow pilots and passengers the ability to land or take off, virtually anywhere. However, that ability comes at a price. Thick, high lift wings, boat-like hulls and floats all contribute to generating a high amount of drag. Consequently, most amphibians are slow and sluggish. Enter, the sea wind. In the mid-70s, Richard Silver sought to redefine what an amphibian should look like, and developed the Sea Wind 2000. Powered by a four-cylinder Lycoming 360 with 200 horsepower, the Sea Wind looked like no other aircraft in its class. Whereas most seaplane engines are mounted in a pusher configuration, the Sea Wind featured a large triangular-shaped tail fin, with the engine mounted directly on the front of the fin. This arrangement helped to keep noise down in the cabin, as the forward-facing propeller is much quieter than a pusher propeller. Pilots reported a complete absence of wind noise while in cruise, further adding to the luxurious experience. Looking from the side, the tail fin makes up for almost one half the length of the aircraft itself. Thanks to its composite construction, the rest of the fuselage is sleek and curvy. The curved wingtips provided stability at slow speeds, and also double as wingtip floats. Another feature uncommon on amphibians, is the generous size of the cabin, allowing for four full-size adults and a wide instrument panel. With its focus on high cruise speeds, the sea wind required long runways at airports, and demanded generous space to depart lakes and rivers. Some pilots claimed that the sea wind was rock solid in cruise, but its quirky appearance brought along quirky handling. It would require a highly experienced pilot to tame the sea wind. In 1993, Silver upgraded the sea wind to the Lycoming IO540 with 300 horsepower. Sea Wind 3000 was launched, and it was this model that sealed the sea wind's success. 13 Sea Winds were sold in Canada, and 58 in the United States. Sea Wind claimed a build time of 3,000 hours, a rather optimistic number given the complexity of the aircraft. In fact, it took one builder 15,000 hours, spread over almost 10 years, to finally complete his Sea Wind. In the mid-90s, it was estimated that a fully completed Sea Wind would cost its owner around $200,000 to complete, including avionics, parts and engine. Not a bad price for a brand new plane that can carry four passengers at 175 knots, with a range of 900 miles, and land almost anywhere. Several Sea Wind owners even installed turboprops, such as the 650 horsepower Pratt and Whitney PT6. That owner claimed a cruise speed of 200 knots. Around 2005, Sea Wind focused its sights on the 3000C, which was a certified factory built version and along the way, terminated sales and support of the kit version. The certification was a long, drawn out process, as the Sea Wind was a high performance aircraft and known to demand a lot from its pilots. It would have to jump through lots of hoops if was to be held in the same standard as big brand certified aircraft. Years of testing and endless upgrades were made to the Sea Wind to improve stability and safety, nearly draining the company of all its financial resources. In 2007 a prototype was lost along with its test pilot, further pushing back development. In 2019, company founder Richard Silver passed away. The Sea Wind project was cancelled, and Sea Wind International dissolved. A rather sad ending to an amazing aircraft, with a checkered history. Leroy Cook said it best, when he wrote, Pilots with an identity crisis need to build and fly a Sea Wind amphibian. There is no way anyone can ever mistake them for ordinary aviators. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe to iCraft Adventures. Also be sure to check out Aircraft Adventures on Instagram.